was honestly not planning on putting out a reselling vlog this week, but I have some stuff that I gotta go ship for eBay. Now, I was in my supply room, actually just my laundry room, but I have signs with everything that has the return date for all of my live eBay inventory. And I realized that the return date was in the middle of next week and I was gonna be on vacation. So today we're gonna ship out these packages and return all this inventory. Do have a couple days to do it, so it's not that big of a deal. Gotta make sure that we delete all those eBay listings. Almost had a scare last time. Yes, I got a bid for another pair of shoes I almost returned today. Did I return them? Did I return them? Oh no. We got two or three runs for Burlington. Seven, I think, for Ross? Either way, it's just before 8.30 now and it's gonna be a long night. And we might even have to come back out tomorrow. We're not just returning stuff and dropping off boxes. That would be pretty boring. Instead, we're gonna be picking up a lot of inventory for my next Amazon shipment, which should be in about two weeks. Also looking to see if there's any more eBay stuff, but I'm being a lot more picky. For our Amazon shipment though, we've already got about $650 of inventory that I purchased in a different video. And I like to send shipments with about $1,500 worth of spend. So we only have about three and a half hours today. Our goal is gonna be $350. And even if we do have to come back out again tomorrow, we'll just reset the goal that. I haven't really seen much great yet, but I will show you how I find some pretty profitable inventory and how to stay away from stuff like that. No brands there. Let's check down here. I haven't been in a Burlington since I got gated in Under Armour. And before you ask, I actually got auto gated in Under Armour. I'll show you real quick what I mean. Just looking for something that I can't sell, so Puma. What? $55 boxers for six bucks? So this is one of the main apps that I use. It's called Scoutify 2. It's a part of Inventory Lab, which is a subscription program that I have. If I just go ahead and scan this, it'll tell me whether or not I'm restricted in something, if there's something in the catalog. Here's something else that I actually have to return, because I bought it mostly for my friend, and then I listed it on eBay, because he didn't want it. You got the Brasilia backpack right here. If I click on the restrictions tab, I can't sell in any conditions. This is what auto approval looks like. Hopefully, it's not gonna happen. I'm now in the Amazon seller app. I just click on that camera up there, and then it's gonna pull it up. It says requires approval. So I'm just gonna click into that, and I'm gonna request to be approved to sell this item. Request for approval, request approval, perfect. So it's showing that I need to send them an invoice from a distributor to sell this product. This would say, congratulations, you've been approved if I was auto approved, and that's exactly the process I went through to get ungated in Under Armour. It was just the fact that I had been selling on the platform for long enough, about nine months now. They felt comfortable to let me sell, so I'm hoping that they have some Under Armour armor socks here, which it looks like this whole ramp might be for nothing since I don't see them. Uh, but we'll be buying some of those at a Ross, probably. This is the Burlington that's closest to my house, and I still never find anything here. Hopefully I find something in the aisle, but at least we'll get to return something, which will be a net positive on our cash balance sheet. Ooh, I might have just found something. They're selling it here for more than they're selling it for on the Amazon. Thank you so much. $111. No longer just being wasted away sitting in my house. First store, and we are already dark. If anyone's actually good at sourcing at Burlington, or is like literally had any marginal success, I would love to hear about it because I suck at it. Now before we head over to our first Ross, I really gotta make sure that I delete those listings off of eBay. This is the Ross closest to where I live. The exact opposite of Burlington. Every time I come here, even if I come here like multiple times in a week it seems, I always find something. I'm gonna bring two small returns in. I got one massive return. I think it's like seven items. We're 30 minutes in with zero dollars spent. That's not gonna be good. I don't know if I've been to this Ross since I started restocking on some of the things that other Rosses have found for me. I'm just hoping we can find some really nice soccer cleats and a hundred dollars for Amazon. I got the wrong card. Yeah, I'm walking through the shoes and definitely realizing there are some that I remember. So I've definitely been here before. If there's not a lot of new stuff for like Amazon, I think I'm just gonna try to fly out of here and get to some other Rosses that I haven't been to in weeks. <sighs> Found a couple things, but not a bunch. Let's get out of here though and go somewhere. I haven't already been a couple times in the last couple weeks. I'm honestly kind of glad that I had to exchange a little bit of that other one because I forgot that I had all these Ross credits and I was about to put the other stuff on my credit card. Alright, we're still slacking big time. $40 down. Now we'll go hit up some places that I haven't been to, so that should definitely help. I haven't been able to come to this Ross in a long while because first off, it's in no man's land compared to where my two kind of circles around Orlando loop. Then second, when I have had time to come and do it or I've been closer to this area, this one closes like an hour or two before all the other Rosses in Orlando, which is kind of weird. So my temptation is to just say that I'm probably going to find a lot of stuff because I haven't been here in a while. But every single time that I've said that, I don't, can't even think of an exception when I've said that in one of these videos and I found anything good. So I'm not gonna say that. We're still probably not gonna find anything good, but hopefully we can find 100 bucks. Our wheels work this time. That's a plus. Man, they have so many of these. I wish I could sell them. Let's check this guy out. Since there's like seven barcodes, you gotta cover all the ones except for this one. $16.99 here. So it's not that good. $29.99. You get back $8. There's a lot of skull candy stuff that's like that. And this is something that hopefully by the end of the quarter, when I don't have any inventory debt, like I talk about in my goals video that just came out last Friday, which is actually today as I'm recording this. It is not doing very well. But that's something that like to earn $7 on a $16 purchase is great. I wouldn't be able to do it with that because I can't sell them new, but on a lot of other stuff I would be able to, but I don't want to compromise that right now because I need to take money out of that business in order to survive. As that business becomes only a part of the income that I have to take out of as YouTube grows, as I have no more inventory debt, then I'll be able to buy those type of things, especially as I'm getting a new repricer, which video came out last Monday, and I'll be able to just wait on those profits and eventually make more money, but for now, I gotta pass. So I'm having a little bit of a dilemma over here. We got a bunch of these Adidas shoes. 
Normally I like to buy shoes if they're like under $35. Mac, these ones are $32.99. And I don't know if they're good or not. But let's real quick take a look at why I am struggling with these. Going into eBay real quick. I'm just gonna search for them. I got a cool trick to show you as well. I showed this in a different video. Got a lot of new people since then, so let me show you this cool eBay trick. If you go over here to the side, if you scroll all the way down to customize, turn on lockable filters and expand all filters, you'll never have to click the see more button again, and you'll be able to do this, which is click the locks that are right there, and then if I exit out of eBay and come back into it, just search the same thing again, now all the solds will show up instead of me having to go over to filter, normally hit see more, scroll down, go to sold item, it'll already be pulled up for me, so. Hopefully that will help. This is why I'm frustrated. So on solds, we have today is, oh, it's July. It's been a while. It might not. I thought it was still in June. June 19th, one of these sold for $37 plus shipping. So you'd essentially get your money back after fees if shipping was overestimated. $86, $65. Sell on average from like $50 to $75. $50, you'd be making like $8 to $10 on a $32 purchase. But you might be able to get up to that $75 or $85. But there's only eight that have sold in the past three months, which is not very good. But when I see that, that makes me think maybe every time one was listed, it's sold. So if I uncheck these and just go back to all of the listings, it'll show nine results. $80, 110, 77, 165. And then the other thing I want to look at is sizes. I think that the size that I sell the most, and maybe that's just my bias because I'm a size nine and I pick more of them up than anything, is a size nine. And so if I look at one of these, I'm looking to see if anybody else has size nines. Because if there's no size nine listings and there were size nine sold, that might just mean that whenever size nines get listed, they'll sell. One size nine, $85, $90. I don't know how they got that great price thing on there. If you know what great price thing is all about let me know because i have no idea so there are a couple other size nine i'm gonna put them back because like i said i'm really trying to not return as much stuff and i feel like i would end up having to return these if there were a couple more solds i think i'm gonna pull the trigger or if there were no size nine listings but since i saw multiple size nine listings didn't really see any size nine solds and there were about as many listings as sold not worried about it let's see if we can buy some amazon stuff because ebay is not doing it today so something else pretty cool that we're gonna check out with this item it's on a different app it's on Scottify too i'm gonna show you two ways that you can look up whether something is good especially if you've already bought it because i used to look at every single order so I kind of have a general mental idea of what was good. I'm trying to be a little more chill about my analytics. So if I go into Amazon seller, I can go down here to manage inventory, search up this item. I have one available, it's 1477. I would get back 907 if this sold, and that's 499. So after tax, it's a little bit over $5. So I can come over here to sales and see in the last 12 months, I have $30 in sales, which would amount to two units. In the last 30 days, I have those kind of back to back. That's a little bit cumbersome, especially if you're sourcing with other apps that aren't just the Seller Central app. I know some people choose to do that and I salute you. I can't. Let's go over to Scottify 2, pull up the barcode, and there's a couple things that we can look at. First is gonna be right here where it says on hand. That's how we know that we have one unit that's at Amazon. We can also see all the same information that the list price is 1478. The net profit would be $8.96. We could even put in the price of the item, which is $4.99, and it'll automatically calculate for the tax since we have the tax preset in our settings. $3.65 is what you would earn back. But we're even going to be able to see if that's true or if we have had it repriced a bunch. So we go over to this history tab, and under history, you can see the purchase history. I bought three of them here, five of them here. So I know that I actually have eight, which means that there's probably six of them that are being sent in. We see that we have those two solds in all time, last 90 days and last 30 days, and we can see the average profit per unit, which is $3.88. Reseller guy commented on one of my last sourcing vlogs, asking me why I bought something when on Scottify 2, it was orange. There's a couple times that I'll do this. Sometimes subcategories will just say out of a million and they'll automatically be orange. That's actually what we saw with those JBL headphones. They had a rank of like 150, but it was still orange. These ones do have a high rank, but you can even check over in other things like Keepa or Scout IQ and check how much something is selling. And here we see that there's not sales all the time, but there's probably 10 sales over the past three months. So it's definitely worth it for us to pick up. So it's definitely good to use all these apps, but don't only rely on them. Know what the actual numbers mean. So we're going to throw this in the cart. Hopefully find some more stuff. New colorways of Under Armour socks. Fun to get ungated in new things. Stick with it. You'll do it. See, I just got to not say it before I go in and then maybe it'll happen. Or maybe it's just completely random. That probably seems more accurate. I think we got like two hours left. Got to get to at least one more Burlington so we can get that returned. I can go either more west and there's two Rosses right next to each other. Or I can go north and I got a Ross and a Burlington. I don't remember if there's a Burlington over out west. If there is, that's where we'll be. Otherwise, we'll probably head up to that Burlington area so I can at least make that return and try to fly over to some other Rosses. Well, never mind to that. I just looked up Burlingtons and they're all closed or closing at 11. They're supposed to close at at midnight today it's friday so looks like we're just gonna go to those other rosses that's probably all we're gonna be able to get to is those other two rosses i haven't been to those ones in a while though we might actually be able to get 
to our 350. All right, two more Rosses. Right here? Right there. You can't see it because there's trees. We're going to take in one big guy, this one, and then the really big guy, the next one. We'll just have one little thing left to return, which I guess we'll do tomorrow as well. Or Sunday, whatever day I end up going back out. If we can't find a lot more, I'd be pretty disappointed, but at least we're getting all this stuff returned. I'm not seeing like, oh, is that a good shoes? Just return some of these the other week. Makes me really feel like I'm bad at eBay. I know, I just have some weird rules. What are these? Why are the Under Armour ones always like $40? <laughs> I did see something interesting over here, though. Is it just cross country? Yep. Damn. Zoom Rival. A lot of these, what I've learned is on the track shoes, if they say like Zoom Rival something, they're normally not the best. I've sold some like Zoom Rival stuff that are shop put shoes, which just have a weird kind of curved sole on the bottom of them or discus shoes. But if that has something different, I'll almost always look it up because that normally means if it's not Zoom Rival D, Zoom Rival M, Zoom Rival S, it's normally a lot more intriguing. I sold a lot of Zoom 400s, Zoom Elite. So a couple of those are in my car being ready to ship out. I gotta be a little honest. I'm kind of scared in buying a lot of these Under Armour things because I bought a lot of them, I've sent them in. My shipments haven't fully arrived from Amazon from this video, which was a while ago. But almost all of the Under Armour stock prices have dropped. I guess I'm being a little risky here, but I'm also playing off the experience that I've had with a lot of other items. So right now we're looking at $20 is what the MSRP is on here. If we look at Amazon, it's selling for $20. So you're getting back $12.06, selling it for $6. That's a great return. A lot of people are probably gonna be getting these because a lot of Rosses are getting them. So they're gonna start selling them. Now a lot of my other Under Armour listings, the price has dropped to where it's either not profitable or barely profitable. That's happened to me with honestly a lot, a lot of my products. And it's one of the reasons why I'm changing my repricer. Well, I guess changed at this point now since this video is coming out after that one. But there have been so many times when I've seen the prices drop and then I'll sell out and I'll be like, okay, at least I get money back and I can go and respend it. But there have been a lot of times when I've even had to lose money on items because of how I have my repricer set. But then I would go back out sourcing again and I would find the same items and I'd be like, oh, this isn't profitable anymore. And then I pull it up, be selling for as much, if not more, than when I first bought the item. My thought is that, especially since these are an MSRP of $20, and I know that for sure, the value is still there. People just aren't buying it for that much because there's more supply than there is demand. That's just kind of basic economics. That as the supply increases and demand stays the same, the price is going to go down. As the demand increases or stays the same and the supply goes down, the price goes up. So essentially, I'm just waiting for the other people to sell out. And it's a little nerve wracking because obviously I'm tying up a lot of money in inventory and eventually I'll be able to liquidate it. But let me show you one other feature of Scout IQ as well that'll tell me how long I have to do this or at least how long I'm able to. So I'm guessing that if people sell out on a lot of these items, they'll probably sell out within a month or two. Maybe longer, but people might sell out and get more inventory. And so the price will fluctuate if I just hold my price or if I find a repricer, which you'll know about by now that allows me to reprice based on my buy costs and what I would earn in a return on investment. I can set minimums, which means that I'll make sure that I'm actually earning money. But one important thing with this is storage times. Right now I have my storage defaulted to three months, but if I click over here to storage, you'll see that instead of a net profit of $12.06, like it says up here, the net profit would be $12.26 if it's sold within one month of getting there. It looks like it's five cents per month for the first year. And then after the first year, it's going to be 49 cents per month. So that essentially means that if I was going to keep the price at $20, I would have until May 2023, because of taxes, that I would start to lose money. And that means I would be comfortable waiting a full year because come June 2021, I would still get back 1146 even in July 1141 which is why I'm comfortable doing this now. Hopefully we can find some more stuff too though, and that's the important thing is diversifying, not just having a bunch of that one item that you have to wait on. If I have like a thousand different items, I don't have to wait on every single one of them. That cycle of other people selling out and me getting my price will happen across a bunch of different items, not all at the same exact time. Let's check the electronics and maybe some backy packies. Why did I say it like that? All right, this next one's definitely gonna have to step it up. Do you have a little bit extra time to be in this last one? Cause it's only just past 11. So I might do some extra looking around. I also want to go to sleep tonight and we gotta go to the post office. Dang, I keep forgetting we gotta go to the post office. Time for the long journey. Well, this next return is actually two bags. I couldn't fit it all in one. Sorry to whoever asked to return this, but I want my money. I haven't really checked out this aisle today or the next one. Mainly because I haven't found anything in either of like a month or so. Just kind of looking for stuff that I already know to scan. Know that before I had teased a video about me going and scanning a whole store. It seems very daunting. There's so much crap in these stores. Still planning on doing it. I have to find the time to be honest. So once I get ahead by a couple of videos, meaning that I have them ready to go before the day that I need to post them, I'll go ahead and do that for sure. Don't worry. What I'm really excited about for that is learning what stuff I just kind of walk by that actually might sell or is a brand that might sell. I'm pretty comfortable with where I am right now and I'm able to continually spend my budget. So I'm not like missing out on money. I guess I am missing out on money in the strictest sense of the word, but I don't feel like it. See, here's one of the examples of something that obviously now I'm not gonna be able to wait out on it, especially because Amazon came on the listing, but I bought a couple of these before. Right now it's 12.31 is the price. So you should make back over a dollar because it's only $6 and that's how much I bought most of them for. However, because my repricer was so aggressive and I didn't have like minimum set, like I want to on the new one, I go to history, you can see what I sold them for. 
11 cents, 39 cents, 39 cents of profit. So at least I got some profit and made my money back so I can respend it. That's the kind of stuff that I'm trying to avoid with the new repricing system. Ooh, what? Oh no, four million ring. Last little thing is shoes to look at for today. Well, I stuck to my rules because this place sucked. So far it does not look, oh, I didn't check the socks. Actually, I think I have time. I'm gonna scan through all the backpacks, but I'm gonna check the socks first, go to the electronics, and then scan through all of the backpack. I've scanned through a lot of them and a lot of the brands. I know I can sell most of them, but most of them haven't been profitable enough to my standard. Oh, that, yeah, good. I totally forgot this section. I don't find a lot of this type of stuff, but this is Nathan. It's a running brand. This one doesn't have any listings, but I've sold a decent bit of Nathan stuff. If you see them at Ross's, scan them, because a lot of times they'll be worth it, because they tend to sell here for like $4. I pick some up that are worth as much as 30 for like the same three or $4, so. Definitely check those out. Well, just the one thing. Now let's go check out some socks. Don't want to send that to a customer, especially since I'm going to throw it in a poly bag and then they'll know that I knew that it was bad. Make it away with like something small, but it's just best not to worry about it. Not great. I snagged a couple more things and I actually found something that's pretty interesting, especially if you watch a lot of YouTube. If you're in a lot of different sections of YouTube, you know about Raycon. I've heard very mixed reviews. So it's kind of funny to see him here, but I was actually interested if they sold on Amazon. So let's look them up real quick. Full disclosure, I already did, but I gotta show you something. So the first one I looked up was this one. It's $50 here, which is a lot of money. But the good thing is since they branded so much and branded well, the price is probably gonna hold, especially since they're spending so much on advertising. Interestingly, they're selling for $80 here. I would make back six dollars 30 percent this is something that i might pick up first off if i was unrestricted in it and second if i kind of had a limited inventory money the one question i have about this is whether or not raycon is intense about their ip because i wouldn't want to get like an ip claim on this so i'm going to look real quick to see who's on the listing so yeah it ships from amazon sold by raycon inc and then i look at my restrictions real quick and i can sell it new but i'm a little hesitant i wouldn't want to buy this one anyways because it's not my 50 to 100 percent return investment so i'm gonna put that to the side but we got this one which is a rose gold one and i'm gonna scan this one real quick now with this one there's no one on the listing. So I'm going to go to research camel camel camel. That's just a website that shows you like average sales price. This one's $130 is what it's saying. But the interesting thing is if you look at the picture, it's black. Whereas these are rose gold. So I'm going to go to the Amazon listing, make sure it's the same thing. And on the Amazon listing, we can see that's black, but you do the matte rose, but it's also saying $79.99, which is interesting because camel 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 said $130. So sometimes it's good to look at the Amazon listing as well. And the other thing too, is if I look at who's on it, it's Raycon Inc. Since there's no one on the listing, because camel 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 says I can probably sell for $130, I was honestly pretty intrigued and thought about picking them up, but I'm really glad I looked at that with you guys to see who was the only one on the listing. And to see that it's Raycon leads me to believe that if I get on that listing, they're going to hit my account with an IP claim since I'm not, you know, authorized distributor i'm just a reseller it's one of the things i talked about in this video where i got potential ip claims from casemate they didn't actually materialize because they reached out in a way that i thought was more ethical but i am definitely not going to be buying those because i feel like it could get my account in trouble and 50 dollars of profit isn't worth not being able to sell on amazon again keep your selling privileges someone else can buy those overpriced guys all right it's 11 30 right now which means that they're going to be closing in half an hour i'm going to see how many of these backpacks i can scan with the interesting ones right here there's a lot of backpacks here i should get scanning all right i feel like i'm going to forget so i'm just not going to put them here and talk about them later. I'm just going to tell you about it now. This one, I was actually pretty excited for it because it's $14.99. A lot of these Jansport guys go for like pretty decent money. So I looked it up. $33.57 right now on Amazon. It seems like that's right around where all of the listings are. You get back $17.39. And the reason that there's so many fees are because of the type of item that it is. It's a small oversized item, especially with storage. Remember the last one was four cents of storage per month. This one is nine cents per month. And then it's going to be about a dollar. This one's going to be a note. This one's a good bolo if you can sell Nike and you source at Ross's. It says $40 here. Interesting. It's selling for more than that on Amazon right now. It does have a relatively high rank, 366,000, but it's out of 161 million. That leads me to believe that it's still selling a decent bit. Since I can't sell it, I'm not going to look up the keepage chart. But you get back $34 on this guy. It's only selling for 20. Especially if you're ungated in Nike, you probably have a little more inventory money than I do. You can earn a pretty good 70% return on investment there. So from here on out, if I'm gated in a brand, I'm not going to scan it. That way I can get through more items. So this one is super interesting too. It's an Under Armour bag. I'd scanned this one before. Zachary on this video where I talked about sourcing and getting ungated in Under Armour but still being gated in their gloves was saying that it wasn't a gloves thing. It was just an Under Armour thing and their gating process is weird. So for instance, even though I'm ungated in those socks, I can only sell this one used like new. I can't even sell it new. Even though the MSRP on here says 15 and it's selling for apparently $42 and it's 15,000 rank, which is really good. So I would get back about three and a quarter times the money. I can't sell it. Dang it. Can't sell this brand Hurley. I'm gonna look to see if I can, but $44 is what you get back. Really good rank, 22,000. It's only $65 is what they're selling it for. Oh wait, this is really weird. So this happens sometimes, and this is why you also gotta look at who's on the listing, because Amazon's on the listing right there for 46.80. So if you look at that, you only get back $28, so the $25 price wouldn't be worth it. So we're gonna see if I can get auto engaged in them real quick. I think I might've already applied. Oh, I got approved. So that's good. If we find another one of these, that'd be good. 
So here's one that's a potential. It's a reaction by Kenneth Colbag. Scan it up, it's worth $30 and it sells for $50. What's interesting though is that's the FBA price. Obviously if someone has Prime, they'll probably want that price. This is the FBM price, the lowest one, and you only get back 24. It was 15, I might be picking it up, but it's 20. Did check and I am unrestricted. And this is one of the other ones where it's in a subcategory, it's gonna automatically be orange, even though it's a pretty good rank of only 3,000. All right, 1142, I'm giving myself eight more minutes. So, so this one's only $10 here at the Raw. Sells for 30 something, gets back 27.58 right there. But look at that rank, it's like 2 million. On Scout IQ, and we're gonna see nothing, it's flat. Yeah, pretty flat, so that's not worth it. There should be some dips if it's sold at all, so it probably hasn't sold in the past three months. We honestly did better than I thought. We got pretty much all the way to here, and I checked this one as well. That's not bad. Scanning the whole store is going to take me a year. Oh, well, that was not great. $45. Not the worst. Not the best. Now we got to go find a post office. I think I only have one Ross return and one Burlington return, but sometimes that's even just the reality. I scanned a bunch of new items today, especially those backpacks, and didn't find anything. And that's part of reselling that not a lot of people like to show. I don't even freaking like to show it. Suck! I want to spend more money! But I'm going to go find a post office to drop everything off at real quick, and then we will see each other while I'm returning the other items. We have more Ross returns now. Remember some returns that weren't eBay stuff, they were just Amazon bad buys. We're going to be doing two Ross returns per place, and it looks like we have one or two Burlington returns left. So we'll go to this Ross, and then we'll head up a little bit more north to where there's a Ross and a Burlington, the place that we didn't go last time. I don't have a set time that I want to be out, because I'm trying to be out as little as possible, because we're going on vacation tomorrow, and i got to edit this video to get it up on Friday. Since today's more of a maintenance, we'll just up our goal to $400 total. We don't have to do too much. We we can get done fast, but we can still make some more money. A lot of people have off today because the fourth was on a Sunday. I feel like all the lines are gonna be to the end of the aisles like that. I only found one thing really, but the lines died down. So we're gonna get out of here and head to some Rosses that I haven't been to in about a month or so, which hopefully we'll have more stuff. Not very profitable, but at least we were in and out. Let's see if we can go to only three more stores. Normally I'm trying to go to more stores. We're gonna have one more Ross return after we finish up with these two here. Some soccer shoes over here in the women's section. Oh yeah, those are really not good quality. I've only found one SpongeBob sock and the same thing that I found at the last Ross. Hopefully the electronics will be more because I cleaned out the last Ross's electronics like a week and a half ago. I didn't find anything here either. At least we came to return, not to buy, so that makes me feel a little better. All right, two more stores. Sometimes this is just the reality of it. Right. One bag, one little thing. Oh shoot, I think I actually left this receipt at home. I think this one has until like the 10th, so maybe like the day I get back from vacation. Otherwise, I'll just have to get store credit, which would suck. Unless it's on here, I don't have it. No, it's not on. Dang it, Anthony. Can't hit my goals for Target. I can't hit my goals for returning stuff because I'm a little dummy. I haven't been here in a minute. Hopefully I can find something. At this point, I just kind of want to find one thing at each of these places. I know most people aren't super stoked when they get socks, but uh, when that's the only thing in the store and the keeper chart looks like that, I guess you could be a little bit happy when you get 100% ROI or something like that. That was a little frustrating. So one of my receipts, person didn't ask when I was checking out if I was a loyalty member or not. So still within my 45 day loyalty return window, she gave it to me on a Burlington card, which is fine because eventually I'll use that money. But right now I'd rather have that money in my card. Just make sure that you give them your phone number for the loyalty stuff because you do get 45 days. They could have looked it up because the other receipt had the 45 days on it, it was from the same time period. That's just frustrating. Oh, I also found out that I'm not dumb. The other things are on the same receipt, so I might stop by the Burlington on the way home. Yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just go to the same Ross and Burlington that we first went to. We can see if there's anything new and just make those final returns. Hopefully we can get to $300 total spent over these two days, but it has not been great. So I'm not gonna say that I'm happy that it started to rain, but I will say that it definitely more matches the mood of how the day has been going. How these past couple days have been going. Oh my gosh, that line is so long. I didn't grab a car because I haven't found anything. I don't anticipate finding anything here. This is what I returned a couple days ago. Normally I'm not the craziest about going in the return line, specifically when I'm like buying a bunch of crap, but since I literally just had those returns, I guess I skipped like 20 minutes of a week. Oh, I guess we had one win for today. We need to find pretty much at least one thing at Burlington to get over $300. Time to try for the last return. And we're short by just over $10 from our goal. I guess it's not our goal. It's my new goal of getting to at least $300 since I didn't hit my goal of $350 the first day and $400 overall. But I also just really hope I can get this back in cash because I think it's $35, $40. That's a lot of money. Well, I convinced myself that I wasn't going to get skunked here at this last store and I would actually get to my $300 so I'm back in like the kitchen aisle. If you watch any of my other videos you know that I don't normally go to the kitchen aisle but I have been here way before. If I'm not finding anything sometimes I'll come and check these out so I did and I found some of these bottles. Rove bottles. $12.99, 1606 Net profit is what you get back from Amazon after fees. $6.93. After restrictions I can sell it new which is good. I like that the FBA price is higher because if I was to sell it at that price you would get back $9.54 and they're selling here for $3.00. 99. Now I am gonna check the keep a chart real quick just to see. I haven't checked this yet. So this might completely screw me, but let's see. And please have sold. Okay, good. It's sold. All these little dips are times that it sold. Means I'm gonna pick up all six of these. I'm just gonna head home because I'm tired and frustrated. 
and sometimes that's just how it goes. Let's hopefully return that other thing. I have a quick question. I'm a loyalty member, and I noticed that this one didn't have the loyalty extended return. Because it says that it should be returned by the 27th, but mm -hmm. I thought I had 45 days from the 28th. I'm wondering if I can get it back onto my card still. No, it was, it's past Thursday. Gotta go back on the gift card. Actually, I'll just keep it for now. Well, that sucks. It's just their system, and they can't do anything about it. Today was not great. But this day was really good. But this is just kind of how reselling goes. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And a lot of times, if you scan more things, like if I wanted to take more time, I would probably be able to find a lot more profitable products in those stores. And I will be getting into that in some more future videos that I'm really excited for coming out. So subscribe for that. Or watch this video, which was another bad day, and you can commiserate with me there. I am glad that we hit over $300. It'll be better next time. Peace.